Hey everybody, it's Chainsaw Reacts back once again another reaction for you guys. Take guys, of course, we are continuing Wolverine and the X-Men. This is Season 1, Episode 6, Excalibur. Now, the spelling of that, C-A-L-I-B-R-E, not C-A-L-I-B-E-R. So, maybe I'm mispronouncing that. I, hopefully, I'm not. But anyways, Excalibur. Hopefully, correct, correct pronunciation. Anyways, it is early in the morning. I usually record these in the afternoons. But uh, due to things going on and everything, I have to record this in the morning. So, apologies if I seem a little bit more tired and my voice and all that kind of stuff. But anyways, I'm enjoying the hell out of this show. Last week's episode was uh, the Gambit episode. Really interesting. I had a theory on how it was going to end, and I was wrong. I was wrong. I was thinking, like, maybe Gambit might stick around, or he might show up at the X-Mansion. Who knows? Like, he showed up at the X-Mansion to steal that device that can hinder um, someone's abilities and mutant's abilities that Wolverine used in that little girl in the opening of last week's episode where she was running around and creating these, like, like, like lava, like, like, I don't know, like, residue or something where every time she stepped somewhere, there was, like, lava or some sort of, like, heat something. So, uh, but he, I was thinking, like, maybe he was gonna kind of hang out or something, but no, he walked away. So, maybe later he'll show back up. I'm not really sure, uh, but it was an interesting episode nonetheless. I got introduced to, of course, um, uh, the Sentinel program more officially in, show, in terms of showing Trask, you know, Bolivar Trask. And uh, so definitely was interesting to see all that unfolding because they had been like teasing the stuff of the Sentinels and of course Professor X in the future with the actual Sentinels we know and the Sentinels from the opening there. But those Sentinels were running around and they held those Sentinels prowlers now. So seeing them being made or whatever and with the facility and all that. But uh, yeah, so I'm excited to get into now with this episode because... I'm I'm getting more excited as we're continuing. So I'm like, where is this story going? Because there's still so many things left unanswered in terms of what happened a year ago at the X Mansion. Where was Professor X this whole time? Why does he not wake up until 20 years in the, in the future? And every time they change something, is it going to change the future overall? I'm not really sure. And where the hell is Gene? So there's a lot of questions left unanswered. So here we go, guys. Episode 6, X Caliber. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Let's go. We see the billboards. So Genosha is very important to this plot because they kept having in that thing Genosha, Genosha, Genosha. We got no business transporting mutants. No, mm. we do have business. Good business. Other ships are raking it in, ferrying freaks to that island. Freaks. We're a cargo ship. What the fuck was that? Oh, okay. Can you imagine if, if she wouldn't have phased? Probably in a panic, probably not using her powers to your fullest extent. Everyone is wondering when we will arrive. <laughs> you people are priceless. You paid for passage, not meals. Now get back in there. Dang. And the crew floated all night before any rescue showed up. Oh, okay, so they didn't die. Let's tell the men mm, they could have easily just killed them off, you know. Yeah. One of the X-Men. Yeah. But you can call me Kurt. Well, I'm Squid Boy. Well, I, I... Squid Boy. <laughs> you can call me Squid Boy. That's yeah. How about... He saved her. Yep. Yep, exactly. <laughs> He's so fast. He's so quick at this. It's good. Okay. Take them all. No, just some. Just some. Definitely the blue one. Oh, I recognize him. Pretty. 
<laughs> exactly. Yeah, he's a demon, all right. Barely. Holy crap. Our powers are worthless. No one here is worthless. Mm. A very smart man once told me that mutants are not cursed, but gifted. Now tell me. Xavier. What are your gifts? Gifts on sticky group? Yeah. And I have butterfly wings. <laughs> Of course, a guy with sticky goop or whatever. <laughs> and he can breathe underwater. See, it all ties in. See, look at that. Oh, look at that. That is a smart way to get rid of water. He th th And it kind of goes with him. That is pretty cool. Exactly. She's like, what the fuck? <laughs> He's the sort of time apart now. I'm Pirate Nightcrawler. I like the animation they're using for his uh, teleportation. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I need to look up, unless they say this character's name, uh, I need to look up who this character is, because I just I recognize the look, I just don't remember the name. He probably would, but he's gonna pass on your lethal games. I'm just saying, gonna pass on that. Oh, tail comes in clutch. <laughs> I like how he fell into her. He transport. He transported out, and then he fell back into her. Yeah, that one, the guy explodes stuff. Yeah. yeah, and the fact is, I was spending the show up in the middle of this. It's the end now, so they're just now showing up. We've been looking all over for you. Mm. It's okay. I get it. Listen, if you need us, thanks. That little thing. Not creepy at all. Not creepy at all. There you have it, guys. Episode 6 of Wolverine and the X-Men. Excalibur, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Really good episode. Nightcrawler-centric, and they delivered on Nightcrawler-centric. They had Nightcrawler flashbacks, and then Nightcrawler was really the main focus of this episode. And there was a little bit of Wolverine in the rest of the X-Men, but really it was Nightcrawler. And I think it was interesting that, once again, we're tying back into Genosha. Like, that is the one of the main focuses of this whole show right now is Genosha. How it all ties in, all of the billboards, and then Professor X showing up there apparently the week before when they found them, uh, when Frost found him through Cerebro. And uh, and then, of course, we had Kitty going to Genosha, and now we have Nightcrawler. Not going to Genosha, but trying to make sure that these group of mutants who are getting taken to Genosha through these cargo ships or whatever can safely go. Now... The opening of the episode where we had something coming out of the water and then we had this ship that went down. I think the Ellis or something. Could be completely wrong what, what that ship was called. Because uh, it was briefly shown for a quick second then it cut away. But uh, I was like, the fuck? Is the Kraken? Is it the Kraken? No, it's not the Kraken. <laughs> it's a ship full of mutants. And the villain that, they, that they're working for is Mojo. And I'm thinking like, that, that you know... When I think Mojo, I think of Powerpuff Girls, you know, Mojo, Jojo, Jojo, that fucking monkey from that show. If you've ever seen the show, you know what I'm talking about. But Mojo, like, I remember that character. I remember that, the visual of the character. I'm like, I remember that character, Mojo. Uh, and the, the, the main uh, baddie in terms of Nightcrawler fighting and everything was Spiral. So I don't recognize her, but I liked her ability a lot. But 
So we have, apparently, it's this thing to where if you're a cargo ship or a ship that goes out to sea and you're going to be near Genosha, that you, like, you essentially, you're going to get paid on the side on top of your normal job, you know, operating the ship or whatever you do on the ship to transport mutants to Genosha. So this was something they showed within this episode. We had a bunch of uh, mutants being put on the ship and apparently they're being complete assholes. The humans are not the mutants. The humans are to the mutants because they're like freaks, make sure you have your money. And, uh, like we're only paying for transportation. You're not, you're not paying for food or any sort of bedding. So you're just going to stay in the holding place or whatever. You're going to be out of sight and that's it. So pretty messed up. So when we get to what I presumed was the Kraken, something coming out of the water, it's actually a ship that's operated by these, um, I get, I guess that they have to be mutants or some sort of mercenaries. They call them pirates, but they had some sort of abilities, especially Spiral did, had some sort of ability. Was able to transport. It's kind, it was, it's kind of like, kind of like Nightcrawler's powers, except she's doing it with her mechanical arms and bringing them from wherever they are. I guess there might be like a certain distance from her where she could do this, but Nightcrawler has to actually transport himself from one place to another. And that's how he's able to move things around or bring people uh, around is actually touch them. And then they both disappear. And then he puts them wherever he wants, essentially in the vicinity. Um, so kind of similar powers there, but these pirates are essentially taking mutants and the research I did on Mojo, because I remember, I remember I was like, there's a reason why he's taking these mutants, and it's because he has some sort of program, television program. So he was trying to take mutants for some sort of TV program, some sort of fight or whatever, because they said ver uh, these uh, deathly fights or whatever kind of fights that they were mentioning that these were all about. So it, it really made sense why they were taking specific mutants with certain abilities. And what I really liked about it is they left the ship and the kids on board for dead because they're not going to be in, I guess, entertainment for Mojo or in, I guess the viewers of this program. Well, Nightcrawler luckily gets over there in time and they all have different abilities that can help the ship be operational again. We had a girl that could talk to machines. How convenient. We had the boy that we were kind of focusing on a little bit and he could breathe in the water. We needed that to help stop the, um, the holes in the ship. And then we had this guy who could, <laughs> I looked it up too, Vindaloo, Vindaloo, something, that's the character name, and he can goo out of his hand. It's really weird, but it worked. And then we had some guy who could have caused explosions by touching stuff, and they explode. He exploded a, uh, a crate, and they used that to kind of help um, block up the holes or whatever. The action was really good in this episode. I think the main thing was, too, is that Nightcrawler was helping the mutants, and that's kind of what he... Like that was kind of the whole goal of why he was there. And I think it was really good of them to where the X-Men I was expecting to see, I had expectations. The X-Men were going to show up in the middle of all this and kind of help save the day. No, Nightcrawler and, you know, the other mutants were helping save the day in different ways leading up to the ending. And then they show up at the end, the X-Men do. Uh, but then Mojo sees Wolverine. He's like, oh, the X-Men, if they're all like that Nightcrawler, like the blue one, I need all of them. So... That's not going to be good, right? I don't know. Maybe we'll get back to that before the season ends because this is it. One and done. Uh, there is no season two, unfortunately. So, yeah. But um, that was really good in terms of highlighting uh, Nightcrawler in this episode. Not just so much like having Nightcrawler are part of the story. He was the story. And I like the flashbacks where he was being hunted down and then they all, they all freeze. Professor X shows up and he's like, I'm here to help. He's like, no one's... And then I like here's what I like so much about the interaction is that Professor X shows up, of course... And saves him, but he says, I'm, I'm Charles Xavier. Let me help you. And then he's like, no, no, no. No one's ever helped me before. He's like, let me be the first. I thought that was really a great response from him. Like, no one's ever helped me before. Well, let me be the first. Let me be the first person to help you. Um, and I think that was really smart because to show where he's come from, because when he was talking to those kids on the ship going down and they were spending a way too, many, too much time talking, but I, I get it. You have to kind of highlight these different, uh, mutants that we don't really know about and what they can do the gooey hands and all that shit one has butterfly wings but he said that you know someone once said that what you have is a gift you know it's not useless it's not you know a curse or whatever and he was talking about charles xavier saying that you know we all have gifts what is your gift i think that was really smart to show that nightcrawler has really taken to heart what professor x you know told him and what what said you know what he said to him so 
that was very, very good. Um, and I, I like the fact that I was expecting that they were all going to get on the Blackbird and maybe go to Genosha, but I think that the way they went about it was like Nightcrawler's going to see it through to where they all get on Genosha. They're all safe. And I think the reason why Genosha is so important is because it is, a, I guess, an island that cannot be touched um, by the task force, the MRD, I think that's what they call it, right, the MRD, that are going after mutants. I guess they can't touch the island. I'm guessing they can't. I guess they don't have jurisdiction, so they can't go over there technically. I have a feeling with the amount of focus they're doing on Genosha and the mutants going there for safe haven that they might break their jurisdiction or something and they might show up on Genosha and they probably won't end well. I, I, that's just my assumption just because they're putting so much focus on Genosha in general and these mutants showing up there. So we'll see. But I really enjoyed the episode. A great stuff with these great stuff with characters and all this kind of stuff. And um, like I said, I was expecting it to when, once Nightcrawler showed up, I'm like, okay, it's gonna be Nightcrawler and he's gonna be part of the story. No, he was really the story. Like he was really the focus of the story. Um, he befriended that, uh, that kid who could breathe underwater and was helping everybody else. So that was a really good way to kind of highlight what Nightcrawler learned being an X-Men and, and basically learning and just kicking major ass. Some good, some good action in this episode. So anyways, that's the reaction. Hope you guys enjoyed it. What'd you guys think of this episode of Wolverine and the X-Men? Let me know in the comment section below this video. Talk to you guys soon. Peace out.